Hello everyone, we're going to be starting off with a round robin tutorial today and I'm sorry for delaying this for a while now. Uh, well, let's get started then. Uh, the round robin tutorial requires a time quantum and a request queue. These are the only two different things that you would notice from the traditional other CPU scheduling algorithms. The time quantum determines the amount of time that the process would be executed for. I mean, regardless the burst time is big or small, if the time quantum is given, the process has to execute for that amount of time only not more than that. So, and, and there's a request queue because when you have processes arriving, you have to put it in the queue according to the arrival time that uh, the process arrives in. You'll get the hang, you'll get to know what the request queue is for after we're doing this algorithm. So let's get started. Uh, the, uh, first of all, the process P1 arrives in the CPU. So we execute process P1 for zero to two seconds because the time quantum is two. Uh, even though the burst time is 4. So the remaining time will be 2 seconds now. So within 2 seconds, P2 and P3 has arrived in the CPU. So we put P2 and P3 in the queue. P1 we have executed already. Alright? So P2 and P3 in the queue. But listen, uh, P1 has not been completed fully. Uh, P1 already still has a bit of remaining burst time left. So we have to queue P2 too after executing P1. Uh, sorry, P1... We have to execute P1 again because uh, it's not finished fully. So, there we go. P1. So, what did we say? First thing that happens is you within two seconds, we queue the processes that have arrived in the CPU first, and then we queue the process that we're executing if, if it has some rem remaining burst time left. Since P1 has two seconds left, we're queuing it too. If, if it had zero second left, then we wouldn't be queuing it. Only P2 and P3 would be queued in the rest request queue. All right. So next we execute P2. So P2 will be executed for four sec uh, two seconds, so two to four. And it, the remaining time will be three. So within four seconds, we have P4 arrived, arriving in the CPU. So P4, we queue it. And we still have P2 left. which is not completed fully. So we... QP2 again. All right. So next, we go to P3. Yeah. So next, we go to P3, and then P3. The arrival time, uh, the burst time is six. So we are executing for two seconds again. P3. So six. So four. All right. And then within six seconds, we have P5 arriving in the system. And that's it. And P3 is still left. So we again queue P3. All right. So now next we execute P1 again, uh, which has two seconds left. And P1 will be fully completed now. So 8. So it will be 0. And P1 is over. So we don't need to queue it again. And within 8 seconds, we have P6 arriving in the CPU. So we queue P6. And we don't have to put P1 again because P1 is fully completed. All right, next we go to P4. And P4's uh, burst time is just one. So even though the time quantum is two, we will just be uh, executing one because there's just one units only for uh, one units only for P4. So P4, one unit, so it will be nine. All right, so P4 is done. We don't need to queue it here. And since all the processes have arrived already in the system, so we don't need to queue anymore. Next, we go to P2. P2, three units. So we have, will be completing two units only. So one unit will be left here. So 9, 10, 11. All right. So one unit will still be left here. So we'll be queuing P2. Since all the processes have arrived, so we will just be queuing the processes that are remaining right now, not, not the processes that have been arriving within this second, because all the processes in the CPU have already arrived. Okay. So next, we go to P. <coughs> P5 and P5 has three units, we'll be computing just two units. So 13. And we'll be queuing it again because P5 is still uh, not over fully. Then we go uh, compute P3 and P3 will have two units left. We'll be queuing P3 again and executing P3. Going for 15. All right, then we go execute P6, and P6 has just one unit left. 
So, oh, sorry, P6 has just uh, two units left. So, 17. So, here will be P6, and P6 is done. All right, then we need to queue P6 again because P6 is fully done. And then we execute P2. And P2 will be here, just one unit, so 18. So we don't need to queue it since P2 is completed fully. All right, then we have P5. <coughs> P5 will be, uh, what's it called, um, one unit, so 19. So P5, and it's done. And then next we have P3. P3 and P3 is just two units left, so 21. It's not like what, what what's left that we're doing. We are also considering the TQ, uh, uh, like we have to compute the process in such a way that it's less than or equal to the time quantum. All right, so yeah, that's about it for the, uh, uh, the round robin example. But like in most books, the example is given in such a way that you have just the process and the burst time, no arrival time. Well, that's the easier version. You won't get that easy in the exam. I mean, if your teacher is really good, of course, you'll be getting that easy. But yeah, the, the main uh, like the main difference between the arrival time given and not given example is that when there is arrival time not given, we always assume that the arrival time is zero for every process, which means that each of the processes have arrived in the CPU at the same time. So in that case, we don't really need a request queue because we will be just executing the process sequentially. If P1 is completed, we will be, you know, we will be needing request queue in the, in the sense that when P1 is, okay, let's just show it with an example. For example, there is P1, P2, P3, and the processes are 5, 3, 1, and the TQ is, is 2. Okay, this is burst time. This is the process. Now, in this case, we'll, uh, since the arrival time is zero, so we'll be executing all the processes sequentially. So P1, uh, what we, uh, first we'll be executing P1 because uh, uh, because P1 is given sequentially here. Even though both of the even though all of the arrival times are the same, we will still be considering the sequence that's the order that it's given in this in this table. Okay, so that time uh, the we'll be executing two units of P1. So zero to two. And three, uh, three will be left. Then we'll be executing P two. One, one unit will be left. So two, four, right? And then, then we'll be executing P three. Then one, uh, P three is just one unit, so it will be five. Then we will again go back to P one. Well, so it will have one unit left. So five, six, seven. Then we'll be executing P2, 8, because it's just one unit. And then we'll be again executing P1, so 9. So it will be 0 for you, because it will be 0. So yeah, so the, the format is P1, P2, P3. Then again, we go to the beginning and do it. All right, like we don't need a request queue in the sense that we will just be computing sequentially. P1, P2, P3 is complete. Still, P1 is left some bit. So we go again to P1, then P2, then P3. So it will just be sequential. P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, then again P1, P2, P3, whatever is left. So yeah, that's about it for the round robin algorithm. I hope you understood the examples that I've showed. And please subscribe and give a thumbs up if you want more uh, computer science tutorials. And good luck.